This is the four hole challenge. I'm down here at the beautiful Mere Golf Club and I've been joined by top man, top keeper, and I've heard bloody good golfer, Jack Butland. How you doing, mate? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. How are you? Yeah, not bad. I've been hearing some big things about you, pal, golfing wise. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see, won't we? We'll see. I'm going to keep my cards close to my chest, but it's been good. I enjoy my golf. Yeah. I got told uh, by Declan Rice last week, scratch. Off the charts. I don't know where he's heard that from. Well, not other than that. No, four. 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 No. Deck, I've not even played golf with Deck. It's, it's so a, he's, he's spreading vicious rumours. <laughs> I need those that's, four shots. That's a great rumour though, isn't it? It's a great rumour. Um, it's a nice one, Deck. <laughs> Cheers, Deck. Right, so what is the stroke index of this hole? Well, we are par five. Yeah. First hole, index evades me. But try and get it in in the least amount of shots. So, so basically, I'll get a shot on every hole, don't I? Yeah, I'll give you a shot every hole. Shot every hole. Get in. Right, let's crack on. Four! So there's two trees on the right. Yeah. Don't go anywhere near them. So we want to go left. Right is bad news, which is bad news for me. Yeah. Don't know about you, but right is bad. News. I don't know. It doesn't. It depends on each day how I hit the ball. Okay. So Sweet. yeah, it could go right, could go left, could go down the middle. Yeah, straight. Yeah. This is your nemesis, this hole, isn't it? Yeah, I hate it. Just it's a par five. You want to start well, don't you? Can you get a cheeky little birdie par on the cards, and then it's just littered <laughs> with don't go right, and it messes with my head. So don't you do the same. Right. Here we go. And I've got more people watching as well. Yeah. I hate when people Six, watch. Six, seven now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go Don't right. What? Don't go that right, you said. All right. If you can have... Oh. Yeah, you'll be fine there, mate. Yeah? Yeah, you'll be fine. He said, don't go right. I went I just right. Catered. Catered for, just gave you a little bit of a warning, right. that's all. No, I appreciate it. He can hit it. I've seen him. He can hit it. <laughs> You can come again, Tubes. <laughs> Hit the roll, Jack. Again, Don't please. you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the drive, Jack. Don't you come back no more. What speed you want? I've got the number, I've got two, I'm going two. I need to turn it on though. No, one. One. Here we go. Oh, I love you. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. What a little pace going on. Uh, right, talk to me about your first shot. Oh, yeah, like I said, that was, I think, the best shot I've ever hit on this hole, and I hate it. So uh, you can come again, mate. Absolutely. Again. How long have you been playing golf for? Um, I played when I was younger a little bit with my, with my granddad um, before he passed away. So that was something that I always had in common with him, which was, which was pretty amazing. But at that point, it wasn't high on my list, football and, you know, so many other sports. I just loved everything. So it was, it was something I enjoyed, but I didn't really play very often. Um, as I got older, a few of my other friends got into it and we started to play a little bit more. Um, but probably, probably the last five years, um, we've had, or probably a little bit more than that, we've always had a really good little golf group at Stoke. I heard you, you had Crouchy, yeah. Sid Well, we had Crouchy, Charlie Sid, Adam. Jono, Charlie. Uh, Glenn Whelan, Mark Wilson, um, Shay Given through the years as well. We had Shay in there. Um, Ryan Shawcross played a bit. Asmir Begovic played a bit. So we always had quite yeah. a good school. Um, and at the time, we had Mark Hughes that was the manager. And, he and, loves it, doesn't he? And, and Sparky loved a bit of golf as well. So um, when we ever had pre-season trips or you know mid-season trips, we always managed to squeeze a bit of golf in. And so yeah, so it kind of really took off a little bit more. Um, and then the last three or four years, I've had more lessons and got up there. Yeah, started to push straight to the top. More and, uh, yeah, just just love it. I mean, like you do, it's just it's just you, great, isn't it? When you love your sport, you love being around the lads and having a good time. It's laid back, but you can be competitive as well. Absolutely. And it's just, there's nothing nothing better. I really enjoy it. I love I totally it. Totally agree. Who's the best uh, fellow footballer at golf that you've played um, with? Well, I haven't played with him since he's 
got us low, but Jono, Glenn Johnson's got himself down to, I think Jono's off four now. He plays off, uh, plays a really tough golf course in London, Beaverbrook, don't know if you've played yeah, yeah, it, he's yeah. there. I've actually played um, with him, to be fair. Yeah, he's, he, can, he's, he puts so much... To be fair, he from... doesn't drive like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he, he puts in so much effort into his golf. It's, Every day, um, isn't he? Every day, yeah, whether it's playing or lessons or whatever. But Jono, at the start of um, the start of his time at, at Stoke, I don't really remember him really enjoying golf. Like they went through a period where he just no, didn't he, enjoy it, and he's then relatively new to it, addicted like so many people get. And yeah. and then there you go, he's uh, he's well and truly addicted now. Absolutely. And um, after seeing that drive, this might be a silly question: What's the strongest part of your game? Uh, <laughs> After that, I'm going to have to say, I'm like, yeah, my drive, when my driver's working, it, it's extremely beneficial, but I love, I love my irons, to be honest. It's, it's where I feel most comfortable. Been working on putting and, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, I'm just trying to get better a bit all around, really. We love I, I'm a perfectionist, so I hate not being good at something. So, practice anything, really. Fair dues. Golf life, isn't it? It's the only way I know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You did actually mention this rough beforehand, didn't you? I did, mate. He said, don't go in the rough. Yeah. It's in worse positions to be in, though. Right, eight iron. Out the Damien Duff. Yeah, well played. Nice, mate. Oh! Look at that. Say, after two shots, you can't ask for much better. Right, talk us through this, Jack. Right. Well, two seventeen on the old uh, laser. Again, don't want to go right. I'm going to hit a. Hopefully, very nice. Five iron. Five iron. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Hang on. Oh! Yeah, I don't mind it. Is it Billy Bunks? It's over the first two. Yeah? I think we'll be all right, That's mate. That's an absolute pure strike. Wowzers. <sighs> you do strike it pure though, don't you? My heart's beating so fast right now. I don't know why it does it. I, I did, um, I had a great chance to play in the um, BMW Pram for Alzheimer's last year. Okay. I have never been so nervous in all my life. Played with, uh, Matt Wallace. Oh wow! And uh, and his caddy Jonathan Smart at the time, who actually lives lives up here as well, which yeah. is great. Kind of st stayed in contact, but man, I've never been so nervous. I don't know what it is. I, Those people are far that. too close for my liking as well. You know. That's when they line up, don't they? They line up either side. You're like, I'd be like, no, nah, all right, I just I drop up there somewhere. Yeah, ladies' tea, please. Get me <laughs> forward. Get me away from where all the people are. It is dangerous but, though, because if you. If you shank Lampard one, that's going straight shank at you. Lamp you can't <laughs> use his name for that. He's far too <laughs> cultured a professional to use him with the word right, shank. shank and... All right, Shanky Boyle. Shanky Boyle, yeah, yeah take, take it. Take that. Don't mind it. Shank Worthington. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get on there? Did you win? Um, no, we didn't. There was a really good setup. There was like a two shotgun starts on the day and, and someone in the later group was way ahead. I don't think we were anywhere near, but I, uh, till to this day, I birdied the first three. <laughs> what? I birdied and the you first were three. Yeah, but I I hit a good drive. I topped two. Well, I topped my second shot, and then I chipped it on on the par five for managed to get chip on the tap in for birdie. Yeah. And then I chipped in on the par three from off the green. Just couldn't make it up. And then played with Robbie Savage, Tim Sherwood as well. So it was the three of us in that yeah, yeah. And um. They were just saying, right, you hit it as far as you can, and then we'll all play from play from there. So sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And then chipped close and you know, got a birdie on the third. And then um wheels fell off quite dramatically after that. It doesn't matter, just mate. You got, got three away. birdies in a row. Got carried away. Please tell me um, you did the birdie dance. I didn't. I, was... <laughs> I will in a minute. I will in a minute. You can both do one if we get one. Yes, right, here we go. Let's see how we get on. <sighs> 110 yards. Gat wedge, come on. If I get dancing. No, you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, golf. 
golf. <laughs> and that's why that, I'm an that's, 18 that's people. <laughs> what is that? Absolute nutbush city limits. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, Jack, everyone knows you. Yeah. Um, obviously, goalkeeper, Stoke, and the national team. But you started as a centre forward, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I wasn't. When I first started playing football, it wasn't an interest of mine playing in goal seven, six, seven years old. Um, so yeah, I was a striker and kind of stuck with me and went to secondary school, same again, played all manner of sports, but football was always, was always up front yeah. as a striker. Um, so who went, then, Jack, you're not a striker, mate. Give it up, get I in did. the sticks. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did in the end. I didn't like running as much in the end. It just got to the point where far too much running. Yeah. But um, no, we, uh, we got as far as I was playing county football, um, was kind of doing half in goal, half out. Um, but yeah, kind of you know, like 12, 13 years old. One of our, my Sunday league team, um, keeper got injured, someone else went in goal, yeah. hated it, he didn't like it. And I thought, all right, I'll have a go. Let me have a go at it and went in, absolutely loved it. And for a couple of years, still did the kind of half in, half out. Um, and then it stuck. Um, but it was, yeah, it quite quickly became just what I wanted to do. I absolutely loved it and, and that was that. So I quickly, quickly buried my shooting boots and uh, put on some gloves. <laughs> wow. <But yeah. laughs> and mastered it as well. What a man. Right, chip did he chip. Come on, you. This is a massive shot, Jack. Massive shot. Can I, oh, I was moving a leave. Come on, I'm, that's rattled me, that third shot. No, Seriously rattled me. Let it go, let it go. Let it go. Oh, that's a shot. Get up, get up. Ah, oh. oh, oh. tubes. Oh. Well played, you. <laughs> that what, you is sit. golf in a nutshell. Absolute <laughs> shank. Oh, chip, did he chip? Brilliant. Oh, you that seen, could save me that. You've seen all, all parts of the course already, haven't you? But I've got a good taste <laughs> I'm for it exploring. all so Exploring. All right then. We did go bunker. <sighs> go, go. Just give me a little kiss. Give me a little kiss, now, mate. <laughs> Very friendly. <laughs> Absolute little kids. I'm sure you're fully aware, Jack. Yeah, mate. Birdie on this channel means birdie dance. You can do the tune for me in the background if I make it. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I, want. I might That's even what I want. join in. I've seen your moves as well. <laughs> that is a joke. Oh, that is a joke. So I need this tonight to draw. Follow the COVID protocol. Look, make sure you use the uh, absolutely good lever. Ah, oh. where was I? Hang on. Oh, where we were. That's it. Uh, yeah. There we were. For the half, then tube. <laughs> Flipping hell. Mate, that's so good. I'll I love give, to I'll, see, I love I've to given see. you the line there, look. Yeah, I know, but line. it's a lot different me doing it to you, Jack. Go on. Get oh. in. Jack Butland at one up on the four hole challenge starts with a birdie. This is gonna be tough. Jack, second hole, what we uh, talk to me. Dog leg right, par four, index six. So you've got the tree with the white marker on it. Yeah. Now that, that's your target line. So unless you're Rory McIlroy or Bryson DeChambeau, you're not, we're not going over the corner. I'm definitely not those silly. two, yeah. So we're not gonna do that. So your target line is kind of at that tree, that marker's about 240, so aim at that. Right, you driving? I might just try and do everything, go over the top again. No, I'm joking. No, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna After hit that nine. first, I'll give it a go.
Ah! Go through it. Might get away with it. Ooh. It's better to be left than right. Definitely better. Two iron. You've right. got to be an absolute G to hit a two iron. Do you know I once bought a one iron? Yeah. Ridiculous <laughs> I, I decision. Bought... Hey, look, Andrew's there, look, Andrew's there, absolutely wetting himself. The best thing about that is, like, should I buy a three iron? No. Should I buy a two iron? No, I'll buy a one iron. Probably the hardest I'd do it. <laughs> Used it once. Oh, Sacked. <laughs> yeah, tricky. One iron, what's the... Honestly, I literally got oh, it. I went to, I hit one, I was like, this is a joke. One iron. You hit Does one anyone, iron. Can anyone it. let me know down below? Has anyone actually got a one iron? And if so, can you hit it? Because it's... Nobody's got a one iron. <laughs> no one. What made you think it was a good idea? I thought cause I, I never used. I never used to use a driver. Okay. So I need. Like, I need distance. Yeah. Got a one iron. Used it once and chucked it in. I don't know. It's in a lake somewhere. I think. Joke. Ah, oh, oh. shot. The draw. Big high draw. Are we liking that. I actually think it might be too good. Too good? It might be too No good. one's ever said that about my goal. Great drive that, Jubes. Cheers, mate. Jack, yes. goalkeepers get a tag of being a bit out there, a bit mad. Yeah. Do you think that's harsh? Um, or do you agree with it and think you all are a bit out yeah. there? I think there's, there's definitely a few that can create that stereotype. I think there's some that are a little bit more... I don't know, I think the stereotype can be a little bit unfair sometimes, yeah. but you do have to have a little bit of that. You have to have an edge. You've got to be something, you've got to be different. You've got to have a bit of a, because it's a tough position. Very, you know, very tough. Un, you know, it's a very unforgiving at times. You've got to have that tough outer shell and, and some, some people's characters are that bravado and yeah. some kind of you know, craziness. But um, yeah, there's been a few keepers in the past, haven't there, that have, that have had that tag, but not everyone. No? No, well, not you're everyone. not, are you? I don't think so. You're not at all. I but like who's the maddest I'm you've met? Maddest I've met? Um, I wouldn't say he was mad. He was just, just full of full of life, always up to stuff all the time, was, was Joe Hart. Yeah. I don't know if you've met him, I'm sure. Yeah, but yeah. He's a great guy. Great guy. Always up to stuff, just happy, lively. Um, great fun around the place and I obviously was trained with him when he was on loan at Birmingham when I was there when I was younger and, and obviously in the England stuff and um, great guy but he had a little edge to him and that was what made him made him what he is and it's um, yeah great kind of part of his character but yeah he's probably the craziest if you like yeah. of uh, do you remember him in the, do you remember him in the tunnels when he's going <sighs> very <sighs> emotional guy very positive very wears his heart on his sleeve and and that's that's his one of his biggest attributes is is exactly that. So yeah, that was that was him. Yeah, for me, I I prefer to be much more more calm yeah. and and kind of not that Joe isn't, but that's his no, yeah that's yeah. his kind of that's his way of getting up for it. And um, yeah, like I say, wears his heart on his sleeve. Absolutely. What that is dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the clip? What was it? That one. Uh, where were they? Oh, under twenty ones. Were they some tournament? He's. <laughs> One leg up on there, go. Come on, come on, come on. What a legend. Nah, top guy. What a guy. Ooh. It's inviting, isn't it, Tubes? Are you that good that you can do the old bend, the whippy round, Mr. Whippy? I'm going to try. Are you going for a Mr. Whippy? Yeah. I want to see you, Mr. Whippy. I'm going to try and. Try and find something through there. I don't know why I sound surprised. He plays a four. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what we can do. That's a lot of trees. I'm excited. Oh, stop it. He hasn't. Oh, I'll take it. There's a lot of trees there. Yeah, it was. There's a lot of trees that could have gone horribly wrong. Oh, mate. <laughs> he just said, oh, mate. <laughs> I told you it was too good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, you just got to think fairway, haven't you? Anywhere possible. <laughs> uh, you got me. Barking mad to try and yeah. else, bud.
Oh, that's good. I'll take that. Take your medicine. I'm taking that. Come on. Jack, if you could go out with uh, on a night out with three goalkeepers, past or present, night on the town, giving it Joe Hart, big licks, dancing, <laughs> who are you taking and why? Um, yeah, got to take... Got to take Hardy for that reason. I've been on a few. Yeah. They are good. They are very good. Fun. Is he good on a night out, Joe Hart? Yeah. yeah. No, top, top lad. Top lad. Um, who else? Probably. I think for value and uh, don't let them anywhere near, near the iPod, near the music. Yeah. Just you can get pickers in there. Pickers would be good fun, but you don't let them anywhere near the. Uh, I'm not having that. He, he loves that rave. rave he, music he loves on. rave, doesn't he? He loves it. Loves Absolutely it. loves rave. Sums him up. Yeah. That's, that's him. That's him. That's him. He's just full of, full of beans, isn't he? Full of rave. That's what he's like. So um, he'd be good value for money. And then a third one. Oh, maybe maybe a blast from the past. Who who could we go for? I'll keep the England keepers together. You know. Great to see like a, Schultz or a. Clements or someone like that. It would be great to see what they're like. Could you imagine Peter Shilton, Pickford, and Joe Hart? <laughs> you can't. Shilton's just giving it like that on the top. Old school. Old Joe Hart like that, and Pickford just giving. It, oh, oh. I'm not sure he'd be pressed with music, would he, Shilts? I don't think. <laughs> that would be, be sensational. Very, very does he like rave or like, is it hardcore he likes? No, it's hardcore. Really? Like yeah. hardcore? Like but then he's ding, got ding, some ding, good ding. stuff in his locker, like, yeah. you know. Jerry Cinnamon, when Jerry yes. Cinnamon came on the scene, we were both, I remember there was a time we would, uh, I'd hear him listen to it and we, we, you know, at the World Cup, that was something that went down. We'd, uh, we'd listen to a bit of that or he'd listen to it and, yeah. you know, I would as well. So he's got, he's got the other side of the spectrum, but yeah. he goes further up the other end of the spectrum than most. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see if this chip's any better. Come on, head down. Oh, there you go. Hold. Oh. Oh, unlucky. That's all right. That's. Pin I'll take high. it. I'll take it. Right. So, got to put some pressure back on. I'm like, try and get this close. Chip, diddy, chip. Oh, it's a bit oh. fat. I've opened the door for you, Tubes. He's opened the door. A bit the fat on the land. He's open. Oh, right, I need up and down here. And uh, thank you very much to everyone who um, commented on when I played with Declan Rice. I said, what should I do from this sort of position? You all said sort of pitching wedge, which I've got, or seven iron. I tried that with Dawson, as you'll see. It didn't work, so I'm going pitching wedge this time. <laughs> Would you say pitching wedge? It's not a bad shot, yeah. a little bump and run. <laughs> doors just closed just a little. Door was open, <laughs> now the doors <laughs> shut. Jack Butland for par. Oh, it's an absolute bullet. Down. It's a bullet. Wow. <sighs> Too strong. <laughs> right, so what's the deal here? We're we both in the same shot. Um, yeah, five, is it five? Five, yeah. Five and five. You're playing, off, you're playing off four. Have you got any tips for putting? People say I don't take too much care over it or um, what should I? Uh, the biggest thing for me was I used to putt quite, my wrists quite 
bent like that. Yeah. So a tip that I got from uh, someone I had lessons off was to really tilt the hand so that the shaft runs all the way up your elbow. And I found that much easier for me to control. Right. Well, I say control speed after I've just rocketed that six feet by, but- Now that's interesting. It's so helped me in the meantime, yeah. Like that? Yeah, so it's just more of a pendulum. There's less, less moving parts, if you like. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Just get it in. Yeah, that felt all right, that. Yeah. You're, I reckon you'll find it helps. You can have that, mate. Thank you. Right, it's for the half then, yeah? Yeah. Right. Do you have friends like that? When you give someone the part, they just come and put it in anyway. Oh, yeah, but if they miss it, <laughs> I count it. <laughs> If you get given a putt and you choose not to pick it up and then you go ahead and miss the shot, it's your own fault. Jack Batland for the half. Never in yeah. doubt. Jack Butland still one up with two holes to play. What a guy. Jack Butland, one up on the four hole challenge, two holes to go. Uh, Jack, uh, talk me through this one, mate. This looks beautiful. It is nice, mate. You've got a little par three. Yeah. Flag's 150, but it's tucked at the front. So no, uh, no bonuses for going for it and coming up short. So you right. probably want to be a bit bigger, but it's actually quite a big green once you get up there. Right, okay. Looks fairly small. Big dance floor. Big dance floor. Let's see if we can hit it. Oh, mate. Stay on. It's on, dancing? It's just on, I think, on the left edge. Hopefully so. Do you think being a goalkeeper has made you a better golfer? And I'm talking about power, because your upper body is, um, I mean, you hit it, that's a nine iron. You've just absolutely, <laughs> don't even hardly swing it. Yeah, I've got a short, so power wise, yeah. So much of what we do goalkeeping wise is all generating power yeah so yeah so that sense that that side of things definitely yeah. but then all of our exercises are kind of everything we do is in front of us pretty much yeah. so i don't have the range that what some golfers might have right okay. i don't have that range to get around there it's it's a movement that i probably don't come across much in goal so see that's really interesting maybe that's something that maybe that's just me maybe that's something i need to need to work at but yeah, I don't have a long swing. Yeah. But yeah, it certainly helps power-wise, definitely. Got a good th got good feelings about this, mate. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a good feeling. <laughs> come on, come on, Pete. Oh, oh you're a, over with me. It's a bit hooks feel, isn't it? Oh no. Oh, Sandy Lyle. In the Dairy Lee Dunker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one part of the course you haven't seen yet, mate. You know, you might as well get a full experience <laughs> while you're here. <laughs> oh. Jack, you mentioned back there, you've got to be mentally tough to be a goalkeeper. Yeah. You really have got to be mentally tough, haven't you? Yeah. Because is it quite a lonely position? Like, you know, standing there on your own thinking, especially if you've made a mistake. Yeah. Everyone's doing the business on the pitch and you're just there like. 100%, it's, and it's, it's something that I think all goalkeepers probably need to put in a lot more a lot more thought into really like I've always found if I make a mistake I'm usually I'm usually trying to go and look for things in the game and as a goalkeeper you can't you know you can't do that so the game's got to come to you you can't go charging 50 yards out try and get involved because you you've got nothing to do it's one of those where you've got to be so you know mentally switched on um, and a lot of the time, yeah, you'll go long periods of the game without, without doing anything. And I think some goalkeepers, and in the past I've done the same, is like, you find that you make a mistake when you go and looking for work. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to let it, you know, let it come to you. Yeah. But without doubt, the biggest part of being a goalkeeper is, is the mental side of it. Because it's, it's the one 
it's the one position where your your performance is probably scrutinised more than any other. Undoubtedly. You, know, you Definitely. can probably only compare it with a striker not scoring for a long time, but yeah. if they're not scoring, they can also be offering things in other ways, whereas a keeper, like, yeah. you're judged, you know, regardless of how you might play that day, if you make that one mistake that costs a goal, that's a big, you know, it's a big deal. Yeah. So, yeah, certainly the position itself is, is tough mentally, and that's, and that's probably the biggest attribute for any keeper that wants to get to the top is, is, is going to be able to deal with that, yeah, yeah. 100%. And when you're standing there on your own, you must get absolutely abused from behind the goal. I, I don't know how, if I was a sub, I, I'd absolutely brick it going to warm up in front of the away fans. When you're stood there for 90 minutes, they just go and you... And... Oh yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. I've had, I've had stuff in the warm up before. I'm not going to mention the club or what part of the country it Fair was enough. in or wherever, but I remember going out for the warm up and I've got, n I had no previous anything with yeah. this club before that we played against. And I can't obviously can't repeat for for you know very many reasons what was said, but yeah. I was like, how has that just been? <laughs> I've just just walked out for the warm up. I haven't picked up a ball yet. I've barely got my gloves on. I was just like, oh, it was incredible. Just 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 got abused. But that's kind of I think that was part and parcel of. I learnt that in, in League Two when I first started when I was on loan at Cheltenham. Yeah. They were the worst times because when the stadiums are much closer to you, the stat you know, the stands and the fans are. Are just me to you away, you know, they're right there hanging over the barriers and oh, mate. Can, oh, pre oh, yeah. <laughs> can pretty much touch yeah. you. No, I, I had a case where they actually won um, away game, they actually nicked my bottle and my towel like during the game, like picked it up. So I went to go and get a drink about 20 minutes in and it was gone, you know. It was just like you can't, <laughs> you can't prepare for things like that. And um, what did you do? You just got to laugh because you, you find you figure out if you don't laugh and you give them exactly what they want, yeah. they're on you even more. So sometimes you just got, you know, smile and wave, mate. Just smile and just got to get on with it. Cause you gasping for stop. a drink though. What's that? You gasping for a drink. Gasping for a drink. Well, I'm not saying gasping, but I quite like, so you know, in the corners up the other end, I yeah. like to trot back to the goal, have a drink and just reflect on things and whatever. And then some guy's um, having a puck of pie and you were bored. Yeah, drinking, like, my, ah. drinking my Lucasade. So, but that's just all part and parcel of it. That was why, me going on loan to like the lower leagues like that, going to League Two was the best thing I could have done at that yeah. young age was to get a taste of it like that. But um, there was times where I didn't didn't take too too kindly to things, and you you can get they can read it like anyone can. Yeah. You know, if, if the fans can read that they've they've got to you, they're on you. So there's right. been occasions like that. So it's like cat yeah. and mouse, and it's it like is. mind games. Yeah, it is. It is mind games because there's, there's nowhere else on the pitch that you can you're in that close contact no way. and can you can hear it so clearly. Yeah. So clearly. Do they like, try and put you off as well? Do they just like, oh. I think I spoke to Joe Hart. I think it was actually Joe Hart. You just said, the guy behind the goal just went, Joe, Joe, Harty, Harty, Joe, Joe, just the whole game. It's annoying, isn't it? I mean, how, how annoying would that be crazy? if someone just shouted tubes at you from across the desk or from wherever on the golf course, just all, but it's part and parcel of it. You've got to deal with it. Love it. They ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Exactly. Well, at the minute, yeah, they're, they're obviously can't right watch us, so we might How get... have you found that? Weird. Yeah? Dif difficult in a way, yeah. just because the atmosphere that you, you feed off when you when you've started playing professional football and you, you, you start doing it for the first time, it's the best bit. Yeah. You're playing football, but you're playing football in front of a stadium with the atmosphere and it's it's pumped up and there's nothing better. So at the minute, it's kind of you've got... You've got cardboard cutouts in the stands and fake fan music and it's not it's not the same no. it's just not so that's what makes football what it is that's why we all love it going to watch it playing in front of it that's what it's all about it's about the fans and and putting on a show for the fans and the support and everything and obviously right now we don't have that so no it's difficult it's, it's certainly not the same it's definitely not as as enjoyable yeah. um, and it completely changes the dynamic of of a match day as well Absolutely. You know, turning up at a stadium no fans. No one abusing you. No one, no one nicking your bottle. Well, no one nicking my bottle. That's a bonus. But then our, fir our first game after lockdown, Reading away, because of the distance in rules and everything like that, we, we changed in the concourse, Reading away. Mad, isn't it? Because it was the only place that we could go that was we could get everyone in. Yeah. And social distance at the same time. So it was, you know, we're training, getting changed in the concourse under the stands and stuff like that. It's been... Um, yeah, and, and Leeds a few weeks back, we changed, we got changed in the in the players' lounge, 
and those portal cabins outside for showers and stuff. It's um, strange. Crazy times, strange, eh? Strange, crazy times, mate. Right, watch this bunker shot. Come on, then. This is going to be crazy times. Only tips for bunkers? Um, open your stance. Yeah. Open the club face. And then Lead. the further oh. you want to hit it, yeah. the further back in your stance put it. So the higher you want to hit it, yeah. have it nearer your front foot. Like right, if okay. you were like teeing up a drive, you know, like further forward. Yeah. Right, like that. And imagine, and now for, in your case, imagine you've just stepped on your ball. Imagine you've got a footprint. Yeah. Working right to left. Try and erase that footprint with the club. So right. if you if you if you hit that ball flush on the back of the ball without any sand, you're going to hit it straight into the into the face of the bunker or thin it straight across the other side. So okay. think about taking a a footprint of sand underneath. Oh, oh, I can't do any more. 10 pound an hour tubes. <laughs> you absolute legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> shot. Great Dude, shot. Sure, buzzing. Hit it. Oh. Go. Oh. There's a bit of chicken on that bone. There is, mate. Half an Ando's left on that. I never ever thought I'd be getting golfing tips from an England international goalkeeper. <laughs> golfing tips. Might so, yeah. Might need you to give some back in a minute. <laughs> Straight. Told me how to do the bunker. I pinged it out of the bunker. I've done the pendulum, the Butland pendulum. <laughs> it's got a Frankie Paw. I don't even need it. I can't. That's it. It's your hole, mate. <laughs> I don't even need it. I mean, what's the point? <laughs> well played. So Go fly. It's the only life I know. All square. This is the, the cider hole, we're all square. Um, talk me through it, man. We've got par four. Yeah. I think index shots for you, basically. Yeah. So, um, par four, if you're hitting your driver, aim at that middle bunker. Yeah. Right. Straight down the hey diddly diddle, mate. Hey diddly diddle, do. straight down the middle. Your what a lovely box. man. We're against each other and he's helping me out. He's taught me how to do bunkers. It's a competition, isn't it? I love it. Inside, I'm hoping he doesn't hit. <laughs> Are you still on? <laughs> Oh, hey, diddle, oh, there diddle! He goes again with the draw. <laughs> oh, you see that, hey, diddle, diddle? <laughs> Look at the boat race. <laughs> Absolutely distraught. 18. <laughs> 18. Hey, I just off. asked you if you thought I was an 18. Mate. You went, I reckon 18's fair for you, but you could get better. But you asked me after and the And it's tee only because you told me how to do the bunker shot and putting. <laughs> well, I'm obviously a better teacher than I am. Uh, should do as I say, not as I Unbelievable do. Unbelievable scenes. Right, I've just hit one straight up the hay little little, the cat in the middle. So this is pressure on Pressure's Mr. Jack on. Butland. You've just hit another draw straight down the middle. 18 handicappers don't hit draws, mate. It's <laughs> not right, that. That has got to be a t-shirt printed. 18 handicappers don't hit draw. Jack Butland, 2020. Get that manufactured. Right, here we go. Oh! It's gonna have to do. It's all right. It's gonna have to it's do. It's all right. I'm in the driving seat. <sighs> I'm in the driving seat. Jack, you've had some uh, some proper characters at Stoke yeah. over the years. Just tell me about a couple of them because it must have been great laugh. No, to be fair, it's been it's been brilliant. Like probably three, four, five years ago, that that changing room was just yeah, it was just immense. It was brilliant. We've got a great change room now, but kind of the characters like. Crouchy, um, Johnny Walters, Charlie, um, who else? We have Glenn Whelan, Ian Johnson, Mark Wilson. To be honest, it was just a great group, it was yeah. a great laugh. Um, 
and I think even prior to me arriving as well before that just a wicked wicked group of lads and quite British quite quite homegrown if you like yeah, it's yeah. a really really strong change room it was brilliant and uh oh yeah all, all kinds of things um just a great just a great group really great what sort, fun. What sort of stuff were going on I was just, just constant constant nonsense going on messing around with people's kit and clothes and deep heat in training kit and stuff like that in your slips and all sorts it was regular basically. how much does that hurt it's horrible because it's like a delayed it's like a delayed reaction so you put them on you think you're good to go you've gone up for breakfast the next minute you're on fire <laughs> what, the, and you've got no the sacks are just absolutely just burning and you've got no idea who it was and because it could have been done the night before like or someone or one of the injured lads does it while everyone else is out at training yeah. like, you just can't put a finger on it so it's just a merry-go-round of someone getting someone back and not really knowing who it was and and whatever but uh top draw really good group so but isn't that really dangerous if the deep heat goes on your old fella i don't think it really got that far i think they were quite strategic in where they placed it so maybe it was a professional i don't know maybe it was the same guy all the time <laughs> professional, just knew where deep to put it. professional deep heater just perfectly placed on the uh on the old balls but um yeah we had we had some fun it was a great group and how did Crouchy get away with calling Charlie Adam parched for so long. It kind of went under the radar for almost everyone for a really? long time. It was quite, it was quite an under the radar thing. And then um, we, Char Charlie was always in the coach's ear. Always. That was just that's just Charlie. That's the way he is. He's, yeah. he's a man of the people, if you like. He loves chatting with people. He loves knowing information and what's going on. Even if he wasn't playing, he just loved talking to the staff just to know. Oh, what's the plans for the weekend? You know, yeah, yeah. team shape and all that. He just loved being a part of it. And that's just his character. That's why Charlie's, you know, so good at that kind of thing and, and why he's now so good after football, well, not after football, but in kind of what he's going into now and in his radio and stuff. That's what he's what he's like. But it had to stay quiet because he might not have taken <laughs> might not have taken too well to it. So um <laughs> and we know what Charlie's tackles are like. I don't think anyone wanted to be on the receiving end of one of those. Oh, he likes a tackle, doesn't he? Loves a tackle. So um yeah, he's, he's not shy of putting his body body weight around, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Were you there um, for the pig's head? Um, no, I wasn't. I was I was at the club. Yeah, um, on loan. I, I, I was on loan at the time. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> that, bit, went, that went horribly wrong, didn't horribly it? Horribly <laughs> wrong. And probably less said the better. I don't want to <laughs> get involved in it. But um, When John right. Waters came out and said all, all the stuff that had happened. Yeah. That sounded like an absolute carnage. Yeah, it was, mate. I've seen your ball. You're oh, all right. Yeah. All right, big stuff. You've put 50 yards on me there, easy. <laughs> 18, there we go. Whatever next. Palm, pop the jam, pump it up a little more, get on the dance floor. Is that what the P's for on the hat? <laughs> pump. Power. Power. All right then. Oh, mate, mate, oh my, oh my. Sit. Going for a 60. Just need to commit. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. Oh, oh, dude. <laughs> oh, mate, I love it. I love this game so much. It's not like Patrick Severo. I love this game. I do actually love this game. Oh. Come on. Ah, oh, what a shot, mate. I thought I chunked it as well. Jack, final question on the four-hole challenge. It's a question that I ask everyone. Um, if you could have a caddy, anyone, past or present, to be your caddy for the day, who would it be? And why? Any walk of life? Well, I know what yours would be, because it would be me after the tips I've given you so far. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but I, was, uh, I would go for, because it's two sports I love, one of the greatest ever would be Michael Jordan, I think. Yeah. Like, he, he obviously loves his golf. I'm big into my golf and my basketball. What an impressive guy. 
Um, so I think it'd be safer to be on the bag than to play against him because I think he plays for far too much money than I would feel comfortable Did you with. see that program? The last dance. How good was it? Unbelievable. How good was it? How much was he gambling though? Ridiculous amounts. Apparently he goes around the golf courses and just says, what do you want on it? You yeah. know, normal people go, oh, maybe 20 quid, 50, yeah. oh, feeling fruity, 100, he was going half a mil. Imagine that, imagine at, the, imagine at the tee block. Oh, I could lose all my, you know. Well, he's won it there, hasn't he? He's, he's won it at that point. The minute he says that, you're in trouble, aren't you? Big time. But yeah, I think that would be, that would be one hell of a guy to, to play, play around the golf with. That's for sure. Have a big lardy da on the go. Big well. lardy da. <laughs> Unbelievable. Big scenes. Cuban on the go, wouldn't right. he? I could be birdie dancing here. I might have to hold this for a half. Come on. For a birdie. Here it is. Here it's got it. a chance. Here it is. It's got a chance. Here it is. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh! Are you kidding me? That was sensational, as, or as Declan Rice would say, magmotional. Jeez. Magmotional. That's yeah, Declan Rice got made a new word. He's a special guy, isn't he? I love him. Absolutely. What a, guy. Love him. What a player as well. I reckon we should try and get magmotional into the uh, dictionary. Do you reckon? What, what's his, just what's, what's the definition? I went, it's just a great, like, it's, um, we're having a great morning, aren't we? He went, yeah, it's absolutely magmotional. Magnificent and emotional? Yeah. Yeah, well played. Yeah. What's that, Andrew, do you reckon long, it's? Far too long to figure that. And emotional, magmotional. Yes. Good, right. This could be birdie, you know. Right, so. I'm taking more time over stuff now. Actually yeah. looking at it, doing the... I'm going to name, from now on, I'm going to name every bunker shot after you on this channel. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, and, and call yeah. it what? I'm going I'm I'm to do the Butland. Okay. Get Sounds out of the bunker. Yeah. Is that all right with you? Well, I'll make sure you do it justice. You can't be duffing them around no, and well, then putting my name to it. I didn't Jason Duff the last well, time, did I? Beautiful. Yeah. As long as you keep that standard up. Yeah. You've got permission to use my name. Well played, mate. I, I'm gonna have to give you that. <laughs> Thank you very I'm much. I'm gonna have to give you that, I think. Thank well you played, very buddy. much. That was the four hole challenge. That was Jack Butland. And I've got to say, that was absolutely brilliant. Well played. Thanks, Thanks so much, well man. I really Pleasure. appreciate you doing it. Not a problem, loved it. No, no, I'm, get, I'm getting better, aren't I? You're getting much better, mate. I reckon you could be getting down from 18 very soon, very quickly. Yeah? If you keep it in drawers like that and putting like that, then you've got a chance. And just remember, 18 handicappers don't, don't do hit draws. <laughs> don't hit draws. No. Jack Butland, 2020. Mate, Especially thanks again, man. Absolute Pleasure. legend. Uh, please like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. And then we can do more stuff like this and Jason Duffner out the bunkers and draws. 18 handicappers don't do draws. They don't, mate, no. but, but you do, so. Subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>